Good afternoon, folks. I come to you live from Shoroshkar. Shoroshkar. Haira Shori. Haira. Shoroshkar, believe it or not, is actually situated within the Budapest city limits. We are in Budapest, although it feels like we're out in the countryside. This is the home pitch of Shoroshkar SC. Ezer Kilensas Ut. Oof. Regi Chapat. And as we approach the Duna and watch the kayakers gently paddle along, we see why this is such a nice and well-appointed district. Right on the banks across from the Chapel Island, the Chapel Sigat. Well, it's Friday evening, just approaching the golden hour. And we're gonna have a little wander around. I've never been to District 23. It's one of the forbidden fruit. The forbidden fruit. And now we are about to take a juicy bite. Yes, yes, yes. The riverfront bungalows glistening in the approaching Naplamenta. But we still have a few hours until that. By my count, one and a half. And in the meantime, we're gonna have a little poke around. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my goodness. It's a summertime resort out here. The guardsmen patrolling, looking for smugglers. You imagine this district used to be a bit of a smuggler's notch way back when. The Horgas part, the fisherman's shore. Oh, look at that little machka and what a lovely bungalow. Wow, the Shoroshkari, they certainly know how to build a bungalow. We have a Horgas right there. And through the gap here, we can see kayak practice. The Hungarians excellent at water sports. Particularly interesting considering it's a landlocked country, but with the rivers acting as the veins of the nation, you can see why they are so proficient at paddling down the waterways. For those of you who have been watching for a while, you know I am a great admirer of Harapush Kutya signs. And this is perhaps the best I've ever seen. No words needed. Hoo-ha, hoo-ha, Harapush Kutya. Vigas, a Kutya Harap. Oh, how brilliant, a nod tattoo has. Wow, nod tattoo, straw roof. Classic Hungarian style. Really harkens back to a bygone era. Kevin Garnett? Speaking of green, I suppose this place was known as the Zold Beka. What a shame, what a shame. It's fallen into disrepair. This is crying out for some benevolent restoration. Please, oh please. You can imagine the type of bully bully that could take place beneath the nod tattoo on the Horgas part. Somebody, rescue it. Yarkus Factory Alley. Oh, this guy's getting Friday started off, right? Ah, once upon a time, my friend. Once upon a time. The old school that I have Peels logo, Vende Glue. Mm, 1854? 1854? 1854, Ezer, Nyotsas, Utven, Nej. Actually, you know, I don't have much of a theme for this episode, but my mind is being instantly cast back to a slightly earlier time. Oh, the Have. Heading out to Ratskeve. We have appeared to reach the very end of Budapest. If we go further that way, we'll end up in Dunaharasti. So let's head back towards the center of Shoroshar. Shoroshar. Shorok, Shorokshar. This whole time I've been saying Shoroshkar. Jeez Louise. Well, I hope I did not offend too many people with my uh, indiscretions for the first part of this video. But you know what? It's actually good because Shorokshar, Shorokshar, that makes a little bit more sense. Shorokshar, yes. Shorok is like, I guess, lines, and Shar is mud. So this must have been known as the mud lines, lending even more credence to my theory about Shorokshar being a smuggler's nest back in the day. Don't believe the lies, it's closed. 
and it used to be open till midnight. Oh, shine alone. And you can see out here already just how much this looks like the countryside. Budapest, this is Budapest. Back in the day, it would have even been more remote than that. And if we're thinking, I don't know, let's say early 19th century, era of reform, before the Seicheni Chain Bridge was built in 1841, and the river commerce had an even more essential place in the economics of the region. It's not true, it's not true. The Zoldbeka is closed. Ay, 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 who's gonna tell him? Huh. Okay, the green rocket, the Have. I'm a big Have guy these days living down in the Dunakanya. But back at the turn of the 19th century, the Have most certainly would not have existed. And as we said, river commerce would have ruled the day, which would have also left a great opportunity for various smugglers. Hira Shori! Absolutely love to see it. Hello. Sape Kert. And I suppose there must have been smugglers back in the day of Hunyadi as well. I mean, smuggling in general is a quite intriguing theme because you think about it, right? You got the Danube, you got Austria up there, the rest of Western Europe, and then you have Budapest split in two by the aforementioned river. So why wouldn't, well, to put it bluntly, a smuggling operation develop? Oh, how wonderful. Perhaps that is some uh, Kadarka or cake frankosh dangling on the vine. Oh, and here are the Shorokshari youth. How y'all doing? Mizu. Mobile fast member. Mobile fast member. Mobile fast As a GoPro, a YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Yeah. Save the part, Tasha. America, Igazabo. Oh, Michael Jordan. Hey. Uh, Alpha Industries. Oh, Pikachu. Yo. Hoj, hoj, uh, Andre. Andre? Romeo. Romeo. Hi. Mizu. Shami <laughs> Ein ein Willy, es ist das heute heute besser lecker. Seit heute wir geht da Ziganol. Oh, na, seit da wir Baktalo und das means good luck. Seit seit wo mal da mehr gibt's ja. Seit da wir Baktalo. Okay, seit da wir Baktalo nektek. Ja. Da wir Baktalo. Da wir Baktalo. Good kids. Where were we? Back to the smugglers, that's right. Grisalkovich Ut. Like uh, the Grisalkovich over in Gudalu. The Sisi Kashte. Ooh, the Shramli Chada. This place looks half decent. Nitva. Kush Gombots Levesh Shramli Modra Shramli Modra And of course Ed Shur Wow Piping hot Piping hot Deyo. And here is the meatball. They say this is Shramli style. It's a meatball soup with some sort of sour cream. Let's see. I have a feeling this is gonna burn my face off.
Now the smugglers would have followed routes quite similar to this, little channels. But whereas now these channels are irrigated with technical precision, they used to just be networks spreading out into the country like tendrils of a vein. Oh, you can imagine. 1813, that's when I'm pegging our story. And our Fu Serapilu, our main character, perhaps his name was, I don't know, Bendigus. And perhaps he hailed from out in the plains, maybe down even as far as the Delvidek, modern day Serbia, and the extended Alfold. Oh, look at the Tukath. Look at the Tukuk. Tukyo. Tukyo. And this Bendigus, he would have come to Budapest in search of perhaps a higher paying job than what could have been offered in early 19th century Delvidek. And he would have come to the capital before soon settling out on the periphery. It wasn't even part of Budapest back then, but in touching distance. Now I've seen old paintings of this area. And in those old paintings, there are teams of surkamarha, gray cattle with the signature long horns, being driven up the banks. And you can see Budapest out into the distance. And so perhaps this Delvideki Bendigus, he would have gotten a quick connection out here, probably teaming up with some of his old connections down in the Delvideki. You know, the cattle ranchers, all of those, classic Danubian transport. Of course, all by the legal channels during the reign of Chasa Francis I. And he would have made quite a tidy business, perhaps as well setting up a comp to shuttle people over to the Seagat. But on the side, Delvideki Bendigus, whew, he had a few nefarious items because he rose in the ranks all the way up and by 1820, 1825, he was making cash, enough to bribe the Vamhas and the port authorities. And Delvideki Bendigus, or DVB, as he would come to be known, would probably have kept a little wooden boat just like that by the shore in order to bring over more sensitive packages in addition to all of the legal trade. Hmm. Delvi Deki Bendigus. The story begins to morph as we head across into the marshy lands of the Tunder Siget. And now for sure, Delvi Deki Bendi, he would have been smuggling all sorts of different things, you know, maybe some drugs, perhaps some opium. Who knows, who knows, weapons. But this was also around the time that the first shoots of liberal revolution were beginning to spring up through the ground. You had writers such as Katona Yozhev with his Bank Ban in the 1820s, attracting the attentions of censorious Vienna. And there may have been some fledgling examples of Madhya revolutionary poetry or pamphleteering that Bendy would have been entrusted with. And that is where our tale does begin. On an unseasonably warm September's evening, just as dusk begins to set, and Bendy has a hoard of things that he should not be getting caught with. These swampy morasses, they were a second home to Bendigus. He lived amongst the reeds. And just out in the distance, there were the usual group of Hachu, the swans, appearing so gracefully and daintily amongst the water and the rising smoke of evening. Tunderkert, Shoroksha. Shoroksha does not mess around. 
No, 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 no. Wow, look at this. You know, that soup was delicious, but it kind of also screwed us uh, because I don't know if this is scientifically proven, but I am working under the assumption that the sun drains away a lot quicker after sunset as you drift away from summer, just like those swans down the duna. So I'm sorry to uh, Shorokshar. Not only did I mispronounce your name for half the episode, but we didn't really get to see you. But you know what they say. Always leave yourself with something to come back for. And that was the lesson that Delby Dakey Bendigus did learn. It took him a while, but he learned it eventually.